Hello and welcome to Women in the Word. My guest today is my friend Alta Austin and today's topic is the book of John. Mm -hmm. Alta, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. It's good to have you back. Thank you. Um, here. One of our, I think it was our second episode of Women in the Word, we, um, the topic was favorite books of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I chose Job because Job tells me nothing happens to me that God hasn't said okay, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Tara chose the book of Esther and you chose the book of John. Yeah. And we got, oh, I don't know, halfway through that 28 minute episode <laughs> and I realized, boy, we could have devoted a, an entire episode, if not more, mm -hmm. to each book of the Bible. Mm -hmm. But your book, favorite book was John and I, I just love some of the, the verses you shared with us that day and I, and I knew that day I wanted to come back and just revisit the book of John. If we had to sum up the book of John in a few words, Jesus of Nazareth was Christ. He is the Son of God. Believers can have eternal life. And John was a witness. Amen. And so I want to read to you um, John 1, 6 and 7. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. What a beautiful promise. Mm -hmm. You know, when I think of John and favorite books of John, you had mentioned something that if you had no other book of the Bible to read but John, that would tell you everything you need to know about Jesus. It would. It was amazing. Um, in fact, I just, just sent a text to a friend of mine back in the Chicago area, you know, stating why John was my favorite book of the Bible. Um, again, if you had no other books of the Bible, I think John, it tells, tells us the, the whole story of redemption, mm -hmm. you know, from the very beginning of the creation to the world, of the world, you know, who made it, why he made it, you know, and then all the way to the end of the Bible where, you know, Christ comes in the, the second, you know, second coming. And to me, it just, John has it all. And it's such a personal book. Yeah. You know, it just speaks to my heart. When I read it, it's like, you know, John, the beloved is writing directly to me. Right. You know, he's telling me the story of his best friend. Mm. And, you know, and I get that in other books of the Bible too. I mean, you know, everyone, I mean, I love the Bible and I love studying the Bible and, and I get that same connection other, but John is just, that's my go-to book. You yeah. know, if I need to just hear the word of God and, and just, you know, meditate yeah. on it, I go to John. Yeah. Have you noticed, and I'm sure the answer is going to be yes, but have you noticed that as you study the Bible, and maybe you could have read the same passage many, many times, and yes. suddenly something new pops off the page at you? Yes. Isn't that incredible? It is. My mom says that's why they call it the living word. Yes. Because it's always changing to meet us, and it, it never goes dull. It, it's just always new and fresh. Well, it, I, it's, it's not that the word changes. Right. And, and I'm sure you know that. No, no, no. <laughs> it's not that... The, our circumstances, yeah. we change, yeah. you know, I mean, I can read it and I'll think, you know, and it, and it doesn't speak to my, you know, anything personally that day. And like you said, read it again another time. And I'm just going, wow, <laughs> right. you know, yeah. and it's because where I'm at in my life's journey. Yeah. And I think that's what makes the big difference. And John brings that so much up because it's very personal. Mm -hmm. Like I said, very personable. Um, you know, we can picture ourselves in so many of the, the situations that Jesus finds himself in in the yeah, book of John. Yeah. We can relate to the people. You know, we can be that, you know, woman at the well. We can mm -hmm. be, you know, um, you know a, a loved one who, you know, has laid a loved one to rest in the story of Lazarus mm -hmm. and his two sisters mm -hmm. and how they mourned and Jesus went, you know, and mm -hmm. raised Lazarus. We can yeah. be there. We understand the depths of that grief. Very true. You know. And John is so rich with stories. Yes. I mean, there's, in fact, today I thought, boy, what stories could we cover? <laughs> I, we'll just start at the beginning, you know, yeah. <laughs> just, because like you said, the, women, the woman at the well and just all mm -hmm. these, just rich with stories. Mm -hmm. Well, when I asked you about, you know, new meaning coming off the pages, I had that happen to me reading John. Mm. I did not realize until five, six years ago that Jesus was the creator. I always thought God the Father. I knew Jesus was there, mm -hmm. but I thought God the Father was the creator. In fact, Alta, would you read for us John 1, 1 through 3? Yes, I'm glad to. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. 
All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. There it is, verse 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made, made. that was made. That's right. Jesus is the creator. And it says that again in verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yeah. Amazing, mm -hmm. just amazing. I, I just love those little revelations and I don't have no idea why I didn't know that sooner. <laughs> uh, what are your, some, you know, I know this is a big question, but it, some of your favorite passages, something you wanna talk about today from the book of John? Well, one of my favorites is the woman that was caught in adultery. Yeah. You know, and I think that was the first place, and I think I shared that on our program before, but that was the first place where I saw Jesus in mm -hmm. such a personal way. I was a new Christian, 22 years old. Um, I was in a ladies Bible study and um, I was reading that passage that, that morning before I went to the Bible study and I'm just going, oh! <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, when, and I could see him doing that, kneeling, Jesus kneeling down in the dust and, you know, mm -hmm. not addressing the woman at all, mm -hmm. the one that they were bringing and accusing, you know, mm -hmm. the one that was shamed and, you know, and everything else. No, he, he, sat, he wrote in the sand and, you know, something that really disturbed those Pharisees and leaders that brought this woman. Yeah. And, and what Jesus. was he writing? Well, <laughs> their sins, right? Their sins, right? And and then he says, and this talk about something that just new popped off the page at me this week. It just or last week, I should say, uh, it really hit me that you know when Jesus says to to the those that were that had brought this woman, you who are without sin, cast the first stone. Well, none of them could cast a stone. Jesus made that very clear. Right. <laughs> That's why they were slinking away, you right. know, because they knew that they were being exposed. They, they brought this woman naked, mm. and yet before they were through, they left wow. fully naked. Wow. Exposed. Exposed. Yeah. Naked. Their sins were left bare, <laughs> you know, before them. And, you know, and so to me, when I saw Jesus in that light, and, and saw him not only as an advocate for this woman, but also as the judge. And how could he be the judge? It was because he had no sin mm -hmm. and he could tell them, you know, and yet here he is, the only one without sin in this group, obviously the woman's guilty, obviously the leaders and all them that brought her are guilty. And yet it was him wow. that said, without sin, you could you know, cast the first stone, and he cast no stone at that woman. What love. He lifted her up. Yeah. Wrapped something around her, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> I, no doubt. Yeah. You yeah. know? And so I, to me, that's just such a personal story. Yeah. In that culture, that she could have been stoned to death, oh, correct? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. And, of course, the man that she was, you know, with should have been also brought. So you could see mm. it was totally a setup, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. trying to get him get Jesus into a place where, you know, they could condemn him. Yeah. You know, they brought, and the woman didn't know that. She didn't know what they were doing, you know, and yet Jesus saw through immediately what they were up to. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love that. One of my favorite um, stories, one of many favorite stories is that interaction between Philip Nathaniel and Jesus. Mm, yes. And that is in verse, we're in uh, John 1, and these are verses 43 through 50. Uh, the following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? <laughs> you just love that. <laughs> I love that. And Philip said to him, Come and see. And Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no deceit. And Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? And Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. And we've talked about this before, but the, 
the uh, program The Chosen. I was just thinking that. <laughs> I can, right now I can see, see that it. scene, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Jesus saw him. He knew yeah. his heart. He, as he knows each and every one of us. He knows us so intimately. And then picking up, Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Amen. What a beautiful interaction. Yes. You know, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Come and see. <laughs> you know, you can see the excitement. You can see a little bit of questioning. Mm -hmm. And then you see Jesus just laying it out. Yeah, again, know? just telling him his mission. Yeah. Right then, you know, Jesus is saying, Yeah. you're going to see greater things in these. Yeah. There's a song by Bob Bennett titled Come and See. Mm. And I've sung it often at church. Um, but some of the lyrics, come and see, come and see this Jesus of Nazareth. Come and see the one that we have heard of all our lives. Mm. Just such a beautiful yeah. story. What else would you like to share? Well, another story that I love is the story of Nicodemus in chapter three. Mm. Nicodemus was a Pharisee a proud Pharisee, and yet he knew he was missing something. And so he hears about this teacher, <laughs> <laughs> and he's thinking, you know, who is this? And so he decides to make an arrangement to go at nighttime, you know. And um, wouldn't want to be seen. No, I wouldn't want to be seen. And <laughs> yeah. I remember in, in the Bible story, uh, Arthur Maxwell Bible story books, this beautiful picture of this, and it's one of my favorites in the whole book. Uh, the whole series, in fact. It was just this picture of Nicodemus talking to Jesus. And um, he, he didn't want others to, uh, you know, be persuaded by his going. So he thought he would check him out himself. And he tries to make it like, you know, he's questioning Jesus. Jesus turns the tables on him, <laughs> <laughs> as he does so well. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and starts asking Nicodemus some questions. And, and again, you know, Nicodemus is thinking, you know, how can yeah. a person be born again? You know, and he thinks yeah. Jesus is just like office rocker. Yeah. How can a person be born again? And how can he enter the womb a second time? You know, and Jesus sits there and goes, uh, you're a leader in Israel and you don't know these things? Mm -hmm. You know, and yet I can see Jesus in such a compassionate way, but in such a heart searching way that Nicodemus, even though he didn't become a follower that day of Jesus, yeah. He started watching and, you know, and we know from the rest of the story that he became a, a true follower of Christ and used all of his funds to, to you know, help the infant church Amazing. in the very beginning. And he was the one there when Christ was crucified. Wow. And he, you know, he's the one that he and Joseph of Arimathea took Christ's body down mm -hmm. and used, mm -hmm. you know, their own funds mm -hmm. and everything they had to to bury, give him a proper burial. Mm. And so we can see how that night interview, you know, at, with Nicodemus, how it, with Jesus and Nicodemus, how it changed Nicodemus's life. Beautiful Even story. though he didn't, you don't see the results right away. Yeah. And that gives us hope. That, that's often the case. <laughs> yes, yes. We may, not, we may yeah. share the gospel with somebody, you know, yeah. and we may be praying for somebody. And we're thinking, oh, this should happen like that, you know? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. as we know in Nicodemus's life, you know, it took time. Mm -hmm. but, bef but when in the end, he was an ardent follower of his Savior. Amen. What was that question that Nicodemus asked Jesus when he, you know, snuck through the nighttime to see him? What did he want to know from him? Well, he wanted to know if, if he was the one sent, for one thing. Um, and, he, and it says here, can in I chapter just, and verse, if you wouldn't mind, chapter three. Okay. And we'll start with verse, th verse one. Okay. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher come from God for no man can do these miracles that you do except God be with him. And then Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily I say unto you, except a man be born again, mm -hmm. he cannot see the kingdom of God. Yeah. And to me right there, you know, Nicodemus is asking about miracles. And Jesus immediately yeah. 
shows what Nicodemus is lacking. I love that. What a beautiful story. Yeah. Speaking of miracles, let's talk about Jesus' first miracle. Oh, yes. I've always, uh, we'd, I don't know, maybe we do know why. I don't know why, but why he held off for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not my time to show who I am. Mm -hmm. It's not my time to use my power. But at a wedding, and maybe it was because his mother asked him. <laughs> I, I don't know. But the first miracle, of course, took place at a wedding. Right when Jesus turned the water into wine. And I want to read that story. Uh, it's in chapter 2, and we'll just start with verse 1 through 12. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says, you do it. So in a way, Jesus has already said, uh, yeah, uh, no, I, you know, what do you want me to do about it, mom? <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> it's not time. But she just sits right about telling the servants, knowing in her heart that Jesus is going to do something about mm -hmm. it. Whatever he tells you to do, you do it. And then picking back up. Now there were set there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews. These were not small pots, mm -mm. Um, containing 20 to 30 gallons apiece. So those are big pots. There's six of them. And Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. And when the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom and he said to him, every man at the beginning sets out the good wine. And when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. Now, what I see in this story is the fact that there was no one dying. There was no one that was, you know, had, a, had a demon. Yeah. You know, nobody, it wasn't yeah. for any other reason and except to fulfill a need. Yeah. And what was the need? You know, I mean, it was a special, it was a wedding. It would have brought embarrassment. In those days, if you didn't, you know, I mean, I'm sure the same thing. <laughs> but if you, right. you know, if you don't you have enough. Something. Yeah, you yeah. run out of something. Yeah. You know, it, it causes the host embarrassment mm -hmm. and stuff. And so Jesus, you know, he fulfills a need. Yeah. You know, it wasn't a life-threatening need, but he fulfills a need. How often does he fulfill a need in our lives? I mean, I just had an incident this week. Uh, my granddaughter has graduated <laughs> from her full car seat to oh, a booster seat. Okay. Now she's heavy enough and tall enough, and so she's all excited about. I could not, I got two of the little latches, you know, because you have to anchor those things in, mm -hmm. those car seats in. I could not get, I got two of them undone, no problem. Of course, I had to look up on YouTube how to do the thing because <laughs> I didn't put it in. Such a handy piece of technology. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and, so, and so the last one would not come out. And I had my fingers in there. They were just getting, you know, all. And I finally just stopped and I said, Lord, mm -hmm. please help me to get this anchor out of here. Amen. I reached in there and Jeanette, I'm not kidding. We're talking metal with metal. And I had been working at it for, oh, five, ten minutes. And the thing just came out like, a, you know, a hot knife on butter. Wow. You know, just slipped right out. And I'm just going, wow. thank you, Lord. Yeah. You know, was it life-threatening? Was it anything that important? Yeah. No. But God fulfilled a need. Amen. And I love that about God. He cares about the little things. Mm -hmm. They feel like big things to us yeah. in the moment, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. But if in the grand scheme of things, oh, you yeah. know, he cares about the little things. He wants us to trust him with everything. Amen. You know, I can remember a friend of mine dying of cancer and, and mm. she did pass away. We had anointed her and prayed for her. Several uh, years later, I wanted black velvet pants for a program. And that's another really neat story. <laughs> But I was singing in a program, and it was a Valentine's show, and I had a beautiful red blouse, and I thought black velvet pants would look so neat and beautiful with it. I couldn't find them. And mm -hmm. I'd looked and looked. Every town, if I visited Mom, Eugene, Waldport, <laughs> Medford, Grants Pass, it wasn't the season for black velvet pants. That was Christmas. Christmas was over. 
I prayed in the middle of a store one day for black velvet pants. And God told me, see across the store? And I mean, you know, I must have looked silly because my <laughs> face broke out in this big grin and I just started running for the other end. I knew that I'd find black velvet pants and I did. Mm -hmm. One pair, my size, on sale. <laughs> But I remember really calling my mom later and talking to her. I'm like, why would God answer yeah. my prayer for black velvet pants mm -hmm. and not answer the prayer for, for Jacqueline? Mm -hmm. And mom said, honey, he answers the little prayers so that we can trust him in the bigger things. You know, God knows the beginning from the end. You know, his ways are not our ways. All right. those, you know, um, things that we could read from scripture. But God knows. And so our duty is to trust Right. And take everything to him, right. even the little things, mm -hmm. you know, a lost tool, lost keys. Take it to God. Yes. You know, he's going to help. Yes. And another thing that this story, too, brings out, you know, is he honored his mother. Right, yes, right yes. from the Ten Commandments. Yes, such good. Such Honor good point. your father and mother that your days may be long upon yeah. the earth, land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Yeah. You know, and so right there, he's honoring his mother. Yeah. Her, her faith in him. What else do you have that you'd like to share? Well, another story, as I love, is the story of the nobleman's son. He comes to Jesus, and I'm trying to remember what verse, which chapter it's in, um, but he comes to Jesus, and he kind of has it in his mind that he's going to believe on Jesus if Jesus performs his mm -hmm. miracle, this mm -hmm. miracle for him. His you can son, prove, prove yourself to yeah, me. Then I'll, yeah, his, yeah. His, his son is, you know, it's in Capernaum. And like I said, I forgot to mark down where it was. That's his okay. son is in, in, you know, he's from Capernaum. His son, oh, actually, I know it's in verse, verse 4. His son is in Capernaum, and uh, we're in chapter 4. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, he comes to him, and he, like I said, he comes all the way from Capernaum. His son is sick. And he goes to Jesus and he says, you know, um, let's see, let's start in verse 46, 446. It says, so Jesus came again into Cain of Galilee, where he made the water white. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went in unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. So he's going and he asks Jesus, will you come in and heal my son? So what does Jesus say to him? Like, oh, sure, I'll be glad to. No, 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 <laughs> no. It's back to the Nicodemus story almost. Yeah. Then said Jesus, said Jesus unto him, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Mm. The nobleman said to him, sir, come down or my son die. Jesus said to him, go your way, your son lives. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him and went his way. You know, wow. and, and it's just so interesting, again, that Jesus knew it was in this man's heart, except you see signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. You're not going to believe I can do anything, mm -hmm. you know. And the man knew immediately Jesus read his heart. Yeah, he knows me. Yeah, and so he goes, he heads for home, chapter, uh, verse 51, and he, he was now going down, he was going back home. His servants met him and told him, saying, Your son lives. Mm -hmm. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said to him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house beautiful you know and yeah. I just I just love how that story yeah. again Jesus knew the father mm -hmm. and instead of you know he knew the father needed more healing than his son did amen I love that and he could have gone home with him oh he could have you know? easily he could have said oh yeah let me go home with you, yeah, but you he know? didn't need to no yeah no and the fact that what hour did it happen? And yeah. it's like, that was the very moment I was with Jesus and he said it would be so. And if he'd gone home with him and he was physically laid his hand on him, it would have been easier for the man to believe, the nobleman to believe, oh yeah, he has miracle mm -hmm. working powers mm -hmm. in him. But saying it yeah. and sending him home yeah. without going with him, yeah. 
then, you know, the man turns around and he knew as soon as Jesus said, your son lives, yeah. he knew. Beautiful. Yeah. I love that. As we've mentioned, John is rich <laughs> with stories. We have about two and a half minutes left. Um, I don't know if we have time to, well, in John 2, 13 through 22, Jesus, it's Passover and Jesus uh, goes into Jerusalem and into the temple. And what does he find there? He finds people selling oxen and sheep mm -hmm. and doves and money changers doing business. And I've always had this picture, and I think he was, I mean, can we say that Jesus might have been a little bit angry? Or do you think he was? Righteous indignation. Yes, <laughs> because he, let's see what he, um, let me see here. Somewhere in here it says he made a whip. Yes. <laughs> I can't find it right offhand. Oh, he drove them. Oh, here we go. When he had made a whip of cords, mm -hmm. he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen, and he poured out the changers' money and overturned the tables. What are you doing in the house of God? Yeah. You know, destroying the temple. Yeah. I think that is just a very vivid image um, of Jesus taking action. Um, he was not passive. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Good point. In, a, in so many instances, he is not passive. Yeah. He's one that's going to get things done. Yeah. And it's interesting, you know, I don't believe he hit anybody with that whip. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> not, a, no. not at all. No. But, but the authority that he came across with, yeah. they did not stop to question, like, who gave yeah. you that right? I think a whip cracking in the air would yeah. get people's attention. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. right. Well, Alta, we, we are just about out of time. Do you have any last thoughts on the book of John for somebody watching today? Well, my favorite, favorite ending to any of the books of the Bible is this one in John, where he says, And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Mm. Amen. Amen. That is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for coming in today. I hope you've been blessed. Open your Bible, read the book of John. It is rich with Jesus' life, uh, the miracles that he performed, the hope that we can have in him, and, and just the love that he pours out on people, including you and me. Remember, Jesus loves you, and he's coming soon. Mm -hmm.